Welcome to Circle Time, the Early Years podcast. I'm Glenn Denny. So my guest this week is from the glorious seaside town of Ballycastle in Northern Ireland, although they currently live in Leicester. That's not a bad thing, don't worry. They have been a prominent figure on social media for quite a while, particularly with their Flying With Phonics scheme, and they've worked hard to develop continuous provision that not only inspires children, but makes them feel valued, successful, and happy. They feel that school should be a place where children bounce through the door, feel like they can take a risk, not being afraid to make a mistake, and learn to believe that if they give things a go, they'll be on their way. They've worked in EYFS year one and have been a Leicester City inspirational teacher nominee and they now focus their time on developing their skills to be an effective EYFS leader. Welcome to Circle Time, Mr. Mac, a.k.a. Daniel McFarland. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm super excited to be here and to speak to everybody. Hi, everyone. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for being... We've been trying to set this up for a while. I'm so glad to have you on as guest. It, it's absolutely brilliant. One of the things as well, yeah, you've done all of that now, but actually you've been quite honest as well. You've been through quite a, a personal journey, which has led to you focusing on kind of inspiring well-being uh, as an adult in the education sector. Isn't that right? Yeah, the last four years for me, I've been, well, it'll be four years coming up on May. So it was May 2020 during the first lockdown when I first started to really think I need to make a change. But so whenever it gets to me, that will be four years. It's been just such a journey for me to just sit back and zoom out from everything and think I can't live. Like if I want to do the job that I enjoy teaching mm -hmm. and and do it for the next, you know, 30, whatever it is, years. I still feel like I'm a spring chicken. And also have a life outside it and work on my myself, then I need it to address it. Mm -hmm. Because I would say, so I've been teaching since 2011. And I would say from probably 2015 until 2020, it was, I do not, I don't remember those five years, really. I, I remember how it made me feel. And I remember the person I was, like this, kitchen table that I'm sitting at right now which I, I'm throwing up well not throwing up I'm going to need it and get a new one because it's it's attached to how life used to be it used to be covered in work folders I didn't eat at it anymore because I ate a, you know over there over in the kitchen because it was just it wasn't a place to eat and this wasn't a place to come back to like my home wasn't a, a home it was a second place of work yeah and it just got to the point where you know, you want to do the best for the children, you want to do the best for the school and the, the adults you work with mm -hmm. and again, leading everything. And I was leading phonics at the, my first school and then I'm just, I'm just EYF, well, not just, I am EYFS lead now across the nursery and the other two classrooms. But to try and do everything well, you need to spin, I thought I need to spin all the plates all the time or else I will not be seen as doing a good job. So the past four years I've worked on, breaking that all down, and building it back up again. It it it's a lot, and I I can completely relate to that. I mean, I've been twenty seven years in early years, and yeah, I know I know exactly what you mean. I mean, there is. I'm I'm just going to look over there. Okay, I've got an office area, so I, I'm not sat at my kitchen table. I am in the office area, which I I share with my other half. But there is a pile over there of not exactly work related stuff, but. I, I kind of have earlier stuff going on that I don't do at work. So, yeah, it, it's that separation, mm. isn't it? Yeah, you have to learn to separate. For me, it was learning to separate my work self from my personal self. Dan McFarland is different from Mr. Mac, Mr. McFarland at school. We're still, we're both now the same driven people, but at one stage it took over that much that, Every single minute of my my life was thinking about how I'm going to try and do my best for work. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I would plan out the lessons and provision and stuff like that. But I didn't have a plan for my own life outside it. It was literally running on empty. So, for example, a normal day for me would be rolling out of bed exhausted, probably at, I would say, 7.30. I would have went to bed at midnight not really slept that well. I was getting, because I have an Apple Watch, and I remember it used to track my sleep. It was like between three to four hours sleep a night. Goodness. I was getting up, going to work, and my friend and I used to work in the same school, and she would pick me up, and 
It used to be a Monday treat going to McDonald's, which was near our school, to get like a McDonald's breakfast and a, a latte. And then it became a Monday, Wednesday, then a Monday, Wednesday, Friday thing. And then for me, it was every day. And I used to get like a McDonald's breakfast there because I had no time. I thought I had no time for to do anything like cook breakfast. And I would get a latte and, and two espresso shots because I was so tired. And then in my bag, I would have a can of Red Bull, which I would secretly open on the side and drink it. Isn't that, isn't that just terrible? I never had lunch brought with me because I didn't have the time I thought to make it. So that was a corner shop job, which was never filling. It was never nice. And then I would go get it quickly and come back and work through lunch. And after school, it was we, we would be the last to leave. So we'd be leaving at like half past five, six o'clock. Coming in here quickly doing something like maybe ordering in food or I would have went to the corner shop a different well sorry it was a Sainsbury's not car shop on the way home and picked something up like a pizza or something and it's you you just get into that hamster wheel of doing it again and again and I felt like I used to live I would have about eight I remember I used to have eight, eight coffees a day and it topped out at me being 22 stone at one point Wow. And my my knees were so sore. I remember sitting in my classroom at the end of the day and I borrowed a knee brace from my friend because my knee was really hurting me. And I was just in tears. I was like, I can't do this anymore. And the person that was the head teacher at that time did not, didn't care. And basically everything had to be perfect at all times. I remember my we had books and my books were brought in and I was told off because my the children's A senders were not all touching the top line. And I still had a spark of myself at that point. And I said, how often do yours touch the top line? Which is so me. I would say that these days, but people would know if I said that. But no one would ask that silly question. And it was just like months of that at that stage. And it just eats away at your self-confidence as a teacher. And I remember sitting here one night and I was at Mark Books trying to look up research and get things sorted. Time just answering emails, looking at C palms. You know, you can imagine every, everyone knows everything. And my sofa's just over there. And I bought these new cushions that I had not. And then I remembered I'd not sat on the sofa since probably for a week. And I'd not used the new cushions. And I would have given anything to just sit on the sofa and watch TV, but I couldn't, couldn't have time. And I thought, oh, the next night I won't have time. The next night I won't have time. That is not a life. And I remember um, coming home from work one of those days, and I was wearing a triple XL shirt, and I'd sat down on the curb on the side of the road because I was so exhausted. And I was just thinking, it was like summer term. I was just thinking, what am I going to do? And my shirt was starting to, so like if your shirt doesn't fit you properly, it sort of puckers open a little bit all the way down. And I thought, I'm never going to be able to change this now. This is not good for me. And I started to take cams, you know, that you can buy them from Boots. Yeah. Like, it helps you, um, I, I can't remember now, it just helps you stay calm. sleep remedy, isn't it? Yeah, and it helped me sleep. So I was having that, I was having night all. And I remember at one stage I had to go to, I said I had a sort of, I got night nurse. I wasn't ill, just to help me sleep. Because mm -hmm. I wasn't sleeping very well. And you can imagine they... And there's a photograph I've got of myself in the lift I took on one of the days coming home from work because it just hit rock bottom at that stage. And I had no energy. I can act the best version of myself at that point you've ever seen. No one would ever thought. Mm -hmm. But it took more and more and more to do to be energetic. And I was giving my all to the job and it didn't feel good and just didn't feel good enough. And I remember seeing photographs of myself and my friend who picks me up in the car when we first started work working together and how much we had the biggest smiles in our faces and like the ch I remember the children bouncing through the door and enjoying it and I remember saying one day oh I can't wait till these children go home so I can get my work done that's, that's not what I'm here to do what I can't wait for the children to go home so I can get my work done like catch up on all the admin mm. and that's not being a teacher and I remember looking at these pictures of us and how much fun we were having the outdoor provision we would set up the like off the cuff fun things and we got a bounce of gasoline one day and and all of that had stopped none of that was happening anymore and that's whenever I, I changed schools and I'm at the school I'm at now and Still then I had a point to prove because I was a new EYFS lead and I had to I needed a lot of work, a lot of changes to do. And pe some people don't like change. And I'm always like, well, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you 
are just going to go along with things how they always were, then that you'll always get what you've always got. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to make all these changes. And then all of a sudden COVID came along and it was almost like that factory reset I had for myself because I live by myself and I was like, what am I going to do with this time? Like, because we were recording all these lessons. That was another thing. I had to be on video recording lessons and oh my goodness I can't watch some of them now because I'm I'm a totally different person in them but I was like I don't want to be on camera imagine like if you really had uh an insecurity about being on camera and you had to record these lessons and put them on places it is so scary and like people looking at your your home I had a bit of a classroom going on behind me over there at one stage but I remember I was sitting one morning and I was flicking through Instagram and there was this advert come up for a coach and he was like, I'm looking for five guys who want to use this time to lose 10 pounds. His name's Keegan. And I was like, uh, Keegan Hurst used to be a rugby player. And I was like, I'll do it. And he called me up and he was like, right, Dan, come on, we can do this. What's your target? I was like, well, I'll, lo- I'll lose those 10 pounds and I'll do the three months that you have to sign up. And that's it. Four years later, still I'm still done. there. Still <laughs> there. And I've lost, uh, what, 101 pounds now. And changed my life and it was putting all these different things in place over the past few years that have helped me get there and especially over the p- past two years maintain the the boundaries i think that's the bit isn't it it's yeah yeah i, I i'm sitting here and i'm I'm, re- I'm relating to all of this you know as i've stepped up through the ranks of you know of early years and nursery because i'm you know you're in schools but i'm in private nurseries i've always mm-hmm. been in private nurseries but there's, there's still that kind of like step ups that you can do and it, it is that bit it's like the higher i've gone the more i take on the more i want mm-hmm. to do the more i feel like i need to prove it to myself and even now as a manager and i've been a manager now for a year and i had my supervision recently and it was like I was, I was kind of going through the form and it, like you, it was that kind of epiphany moment going, I know, what am I doing here? Why am I, why am I worrying about stuff when I get home? And I've, I've started now. I have a work mobile. It stays at work. Perfect. I, time I brought it with me recently is just because of snow and everything else. And the rest of the time it stays at work. I don't need it. I don't need it. Uh, and mm-hmm. it, I think it's making that separation, isn't it? It's going, right. Work's done. I'm going home now to do, what I need to do for me. Yeah, you have to give yourself the same level of work and respect that you give to your work because you deserve it. Like there only is ever going to be one you. And I'll never, ever forget. I went home one half term break. This must have been 2017 and um, to Northern Ireland. And my granddad was in a home and I had so much to do. We had the school development plan. We were waiting for Ofsted to come and all of this, that and the other. So I brought on my laptop and sitting doing all this work and I was like, oh, I'll go see him tomorrow. I'll go see him the next day. And I got to, like, I was only home for, I got home on the Saturday and I flew back to here again on the following Sunday. It's like six days or whatever. I was like, I can't go, I can't go, I can't go. And um, I went and visited him on the Thursday and I was like, hey, granddad, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And I was, I was so glad to see him at me at the time. Flew back here on the Saturday and he passed away. And I will never, ever forget that because it was... It was absolutely hideous for me because I love my granddad. I love him so much. And I turned down all those times going to see him. And I need it in Northern Ireland, in Ireland. I don't know about what it's like anywhere else. You are you get buried within three days. So I literally had flown back here on the Saturday. And he passed away, sorry, on the Sunday morning. And I had, I remember dreading sending the text message to ask, I, I'm going home. I'm going home. And it was like, yeah, that's fine. But can you make sure that your planning is in supply format ready for whoever was covering my class? And I was sitting at the, this is this kitchen at this very kitchen table, but on that chair, crying, typing out this planning. And I was, that was one of those things you think I would have started then this journey of well being. I was like, this is not real life. This is not life. And I remember going back and, you know, went to the funeral and I got, and then I, so I got the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The funeral was on the Wednesday, flew back here on the Thursday and went back. I was, I had to come into work on the Friday. I wasn't allowed Friday off. And uh, I would have taken it on paid. The me now, I'd be like, on paid. Mm-hmm. And then skip forward to 2020. And my, the same thing happened. I went home for half term. And uh, this time 
it was I've started this new my new way I'm doing things now. Still, I'm still figure, trying to figure it out because it only started in May 2020, so it was October. Half term break, I was going home for, and I went to see my granny a few times. Flew back here on the Saturday, and she passed away. When I flew back, isn't that so? That was that was her then as well, and I remember this time I was like, this is so strange that it was the same pattern of days. I flew back and I got to the Wednesday, if you know it was on the Wednesday. And so I was going to fly back here again on Thursday and they wanted me back to work on Friday. And I was absolutely, my granny was, oh my, I was devastated. Mm-hmm. And I begged and begged for that day off and I didn't get it. And I came into work and I should not have been there. I, you should, adults who are in that frame of mind and feeling like that should not be in a class with 30 children who, you, there's a certain level of being able to fake it Mm-hmm. But when you went through that, and that was my my grand, I only had one set of grandparents growing up. Um, it was hideous, and I will never forget my TA saying to me, "Why are you here?" And I went, "Well, that's the million dollar question. Why am I here?" And I got through the day, but I, it was horrible. And that moment, that Friday, I remember walking home, and I said to myself, "I am starting to make more changes here. I'm going to try my best." I remember saying to Keegan, my coach, I said, to him, "Do you know I'd love to? I have this dream of." losing this weight and maybe doing something really big like a half marathon or something is it yeah we'll see what we can do so this is 2020 so we worked on all 2021 he was like i think dan you need to look at your work-life boundaries because you're still taking stuff home you're going to the gym at like nine o'clock at night you're trying to come home and, and you're going you're trying to go to sleep again because like during lockdown I, you could control your own time a bit better and i was like right i'm gonna make a real effort for this so i invented this thing called the weekly can do where I would set myself boundaries. So they were talking about this a lady called Mel Robbins, who I love. And she was saying the other day in her podcast how, yes, you might try and have a balance, but when you try and have a balance of things, certain things are not going to be on a certain, on the, you cannot balance everything. Mm-hmm. You can't. So she said, look at boundaries. And that just reminded me of, oh, that's just, this is maybe why this has worked for me. So I said to myself, right, I'm going to start thinking about work. Work emails are not on my phone. They are not on there at all and I said to myself I'm not going to look at them until 8am and I will not look at them after 4.30 when I leave and I started this thing out the door at half past four and I said if I want to leave at half four once a week I'm going to have to make sure that I structure my week in a way that I can delegate things and things things are just going to have to wait Mm -hmm. and it's not a no I'm not doing it it's a not yet and so I love explaining it at work. I remember when I first started, I was like, well, some, someone came who was leading geography and they wanted to come and look at this, that, and the other. And I was like, geography in early years? Whatever. And uh, I I know it's hilarious these days, isn't it? And I said, oh, um, we use my new can-do sheet that I've got. So, oh, are you, if you can see here, my time is quite full. And he said, oh, but look at this here. And I went, my evening? I, no. I said, I, there's no time this week. It's not a no, so not yet, but I can pencil you in for next week. I'm sure you can wait seven days. The world is not, and what I've realized is the world's not going to fall apart. Mm-hmm. The world is not going to fall apart. So I started this thing where in the morning, I fill my own cup first and self-care is not selfish. So it's different if you have, ch- I don't have children, but my sister has a new, has a newborn. Well, she's not newborn. She's a year, a year old now. Would you still class that as a newborn? No, either a year old. Like so to me, she's always little baby. I'm like, oh look at you, don't don't grow up. And uh, she said she's been inspired by me. Like she gets up in the morning and she the simplest things like having a little cup of tea or coffee by yourself and a slice of toast. Like those are those little magic. If you can't do that for yourself before everybody else, it makes the it, it's it makes the day harder. So for me, I started getting up at uh, it was seven o'clock at. Uh, sorry six o'clock at that stage and I because I wasn't checking my emails I got up and I made a nice breakfast I had eggs I had a cup of tea or a coffee or something like that and I remember sitting thinking this is this is great and then I got into work at uh 7 7 30 and I started having a little del I I used to want to do everything and I would delegate certain things but not there were certain things I wanted to do I wanted to set this up I wanted to do that and that was like, no, I'm going to have to let go of these reins a little bit because everyone deserves to have a chance to learn because no one's learning how to set these things up. Now. And if I'm not going to spend, it's like that. You give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. But if you teach him how to fish, he'll eat forever. And as long as there's fish in the sea. And then I looked at the setting up of my provision. And I remember thinking to myself, said I, 
why am I setting all these things up? Because the children are not using them all how I want them. So then that made me think about provision, about making it even more open-ended mm-hmm. and making sure that the provision there was strong enough and develops across the years so that it follows through with how they should be developed and how they use things. But then it really made me laugh and think back to how I used to over-enhance everything or follow the latest trend on at that stage. It was Pinterest. I don't have that app anymore. Or on Instagram and I'm going to set this up because this is going to work. And I was like, but it doesn't really suit the children in my class or that, that certain cohort. So we just made sure that everything was as open-ended as possible. And I try and think of the classroom or the, your continuous provision, like a supermarket. They're your, your, um, the basics that you come in for, like the toilet roll, the pasta, the bread. And they're always there in the same place. And I remember, because this is how I was told whenever I, was, I had a mentor, whenever I first started teaching that you had to change everything every two days and all that sort of thing. But then if you went into your favorite supermarket every two days and everything changed, you wouldn't go back. I wouldn't feel safe and secure in there. I was like, there's a Marks and Spencers and Leicester here. And I do like it. But every time I go in, they've moved things around and it really, really annoys me. So I was sitting thinking, if you're a child who's like four or five, three, four or five, and you're coming into your provision and it changes all the time. And that thing that you like, that's all, that should, it's always there, the basics, you might feel a little bit, oh, that thing that I really like, it's not there. I'm not, I feel like unfamiliar in this room. Mm-hmm. And then your enhancements are like your little end of aisle supermarket pop-ups, you know, on the end of the aisle of things that try and draw you in. Oh, what's that? And if you have too many of them, you're not going, it sort of dilutes the impact of it. So they only maybe do two to three a week then. And then that freed up more time. And then I said to my TA, I was like, how about for the next two weeks, you think about these areas, which was a big thing for me to let go of provision, and I will do this, which is maybe like a leadership thing. I was like, because if you help me with, to, to do that, then I can also work on these jobs as well. And I'll look at certain areas of provision. And then it just it made that quicker, which meant I could leave at half past four. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, will, I remember one Friday, my, tea and, my TA and I both left at four o'clock. And I gave her a high five on the way out the door. And I was like, we did it. We've cut it by half. Can you believe it? And we were ready for Monday and everything because we're cutting all the unnecessary faff or the competition with what you see. You can't compare yourself to what you see online. So even with my blogs now, I try and I keep it real. I will never share something that I don't think will save people. A lot of a lot of times when I share stuff, I'm like, what can I put on there? It's still a high impact that makes the children learn, but saves teachers time mm-hmm. as well. So that was something else I looked at, cutting down my time during the day. And then it was this out the door at half past four thing. It went from being one day to two days to three days to four days. I can't leave at half past four on a Monday so because I've got SLT and everyone loves to chat. It should be over at half four and mm-hmm. it doesn't end until 10 to five sometimes. And you should see what I'm like at half past four. I'm like, foot closed. So I love setting like, I've started this thing where I said, okay, if we're leaders, we need to set a good example here. And for ourselves, because I want, I want the other leaders I work with to feel and have that sense of buzz that I've got now. So I said to them, you know, we need to start doing like an agenda here and think about timings so that we can get things sorted. It's nice to have a chat, but people have their children to go get. People, have, We're still classroom teachers at the end of the day. After we leave here, I still have something to go do before I leave this school. And another thing for me was lunchtime. I never used to take a lunch break. I used to work through it, setting stuff up. And I'm like, what am I... What am I actually doing with this time? I'm, I'm faffing around. So I remember I, I remember I started taking lunch twice a week in the staff room. And now I'm in there every day, five days a week, talking to everybody. And then I want, whilst I'm doing that then, I, as a senior leader of the school, I'm listening to conversations. And I can sort of pick up when morale is dipping a little bit. And then I try and speak to people. I feed it back and I say, oh, you know, what can we do to fix this? I'll never go in. I'll never, ever like a, a telltale. Never, never, never. But I, I love, I like picking up on morale and thinking, how can, I might go and have a conversation with that person and see how they are and see how I can help them. So then at lunchtime, so now I go for a 10 minute walk every day at lunchtime. Big coat on, just around the block and come back in. I have a really difficult class this year really really hard and the nine week term do you have a 12 there's a 12 week term i think in scotland coming up i saw someone post on tiktok the other day but um we had nine weeks before christmas oh my goodness mm-hmm. it was about too long <laughs> and those lunchtime walks helped me because whatever happened during the morning say for example you know there's special needs children bless them screaming and shouting throwing things tipping things out someone get another child hitting another one trying to deal with all that drama and, I, you know, your shoulders start to get tense and you go up. 
and the children feed off that because then your um patience wears a bit so i would go for my little 10 minute walk around the block put headphones on listen to my favorite songs come back shoulders down finish eating my lunch or, or start eating my lunch something like that and then all those little things just help so what i can do then I, in the morning it's a little sheet that's set out you can actually get it from my my website um it starts with the morning and those are my little things I want to do. So I might plan in that I'm going to read chapters of my book that I've got, which is not anything. The book I'm reading at the minute is not anything intellectual. It's about pop music from the 90s. <laughs> and um, I'll read my book and I'll sit here and I will not look at work emails. I will not reply to text messages or anything like that because that's my time for me. And what I've started doing now is I go to the gym in the mornings before work. And that is a dream of mine I've had for years. I get up, I call it taking care of the five to nine before the nine to five. I get up, get things ready, and I go to the gym at six o'clock. And now my our premises officer at school, he started to do that as well because I've started doing it. And he's like, Dan, I went as well. I feel great. So I filled my own cup first. I get into work at like 7.45. I've less time to do stuff but I'm more purposeful with that time I've got. I've figured out the more time I give myself, I used to be in at seven o'clock and the children are into 8.40. That's ages. And I'm still rushing around going crazy. I can't find things where the laminating sheets and stuff like that. Um, so less time means less time to faff and getting more purposeful things done. So I'm in at 7.45 and I want to be there. Even though it's hard, I want to be there. Like I wasn't in today or, or yesterday because I was on a first aid course, but I still went into school first thing in the morning because I was getting a lift to the first aid course. Um, I went in today. My TA, who I've been working with and been teaching her how to do certain things, she's been covering me. She's level three. And I came in to, I was like, do you know what I'll do? I'll set up a couple of bits for her, like as in get phonics ready and maths ready and that sort of thing. She's already done it. I came in and I went to my desk <laughs> and I've got, I've got these little caddies that I put things in that I need for my lessons. And I was like, oh. I sat, I was voice noting my friend at the same time because it was like 10 to 8 in the morning. And I was like, guess what, Tom? Harry set everything up already. I'm not even needed. I was like, that is for me. I felt so happy about that because she's felt that she can do that. Yeah. And, you know, she's done it really, really well. And I was so proud of her. But if I held on to the reins of everything all the time, no one's going to learn how to do these things. And she has. And the classroom was not that I care about. I do care about things being tidy, but I used to be very particular, but not anymore. And the place looked great. And she came in, and I gave her a big hug. And I was like, this is amazing that, um, that you did all this and she's like yeah we had a great day so like all those little things like that helps my energy wise and helps my mood and i'm no longer saying i can't wait to this lot go home so that i can get my my real work done mm -hmm. and when it comes to things that like our school have something called a monitoring schedule that we look at just like things in the like observe when certain things need to be due and observations and that sort of thing and i look at it month at a time and i sort of plan it into my calendar manageably I only put in, if I'm looking at a week, I maybe do two to three big jobs and I base them on energy. And if something's going to take a lot of energy off me, oh, I'll put less in that week and then put in the little bits. But I put my things in first for me in my personal life mm -hmm. and then fit them all our big jobs in. And if there's no time, there's no time. After 4.30, I always say to me, that is my goal. No, nothing after 4.30. I'm leaving and I walk home. And I try and do bits for me in here, like a bit of housework. I even plan in when I'm going to do the housework, only because it won't get done. If it doesn't get diarized, it's not going to get done. And all that there has helped me. So I actually ran, I ran in October 2022, I ran a half marathon. And this is the guy who used to be 22 stone and wore an brace. And I had to train after school, before school, after parents' evening one night, I ran 12. And I went, who, it? who even am I? Where's this energy come from? And like, I'm still doing a full day's work. I'm still doing all the jobs I have to do. Sometimes I think to myself, am I forgetting to do stuff? But because I've looked at it and planned it out for manageably, and I just make people aware, I was like, and as the senior leader, I'm setting that example of planning out your week manageably for you, planning in tasks that, but I'm looking at it by energy, not over, not overdoing it. Look at what you can do. To-do lists are, I hate them. Because you, sometimes you never get to the bottom. You feel you feel so demoralized. You, sometimes I used to write things on them I'd already done just to tick it off. <laughs> I write some things on the to-do list, highlight it just to make myself feel good. Yeah. Now, do you do that? <laughs> yeah. 
And then last May, so on the day I did the half marathon, I remember, and I came across that finish line, I cried my eyes out because I felt like I've done this. I've got to this point in life now where I can say I'm putting myself first. And then that evening I got home, I did something a bit crazy. Um, Still with sore legs, booked a full marathon for May 2023 last year. I remember saying to Keegan, my coach, guess what I've just done? He's like, what? I booked a marathon in May. And for me, I did that on purpose because I said to myself, well, that's May. I know May is not the end of the summer term, but it's it's getting there. Mm-hmm. That meant my work life, how I have my work life boundaries will have to, I'll have to think about them and work hard on it for the, all that term from here to there if I want to train and do this. Mm-hmm. And so I did it. And in May, 28th of May, 2022, I've, con- I've written it on my board up. There's one of my proud things. I ran the full marathon and I bought the photographs from it. I have a big smile on my face. I... I was so emotional. And that day when I crossed the finish line, I said to myself, I'm going to let go of all these other hangups I've got about the job and things in life. And just, I've done it now. And I've shown that I've come from the point where I hate it going to work. I hate it being there. I, and I used to love teaching, hate every bit of it. Had no time for myself. Sat up to 12 o'clock, was 22 stone. There's at one point when I was walking back, I felt that there was no way out of this. Mm-hmm. And... I don't want to disappoint anyone, not my parents, not my family. And I thought if I quit this job or even worse, lose it because I'm not doing a good enough job, then I'll be a disappointment. And it, I suffered from depression at that point. And I remember it was, what when was that? What has it been about March or April time in 2019? Yes, I had got out of my friend's car and I was cross. I had uh, it was a roundabout just before the roundabout. I had to cross across the roundabout to get back here, and I stood and I was like, I don't want to be here anymore. And I remember there's a set of traffic lights, and I was like, I'm just going to walk out in front of this bus to get out of work. I don't want to go anymore. And that was the lowest point of my life. And I took a photograph that day in the lift, come coming up here because I couldn't go up the stairs because I had sore knees to never let myself get to that point in life again. And I still have that photograph now. Mm -hmm. And that's a point you would think then that I would start to make the changes, but I just couldn't, I had no energy, no zest for anything, but I made the change and I've turned it around by putting like the can do thing in place. And I always say to myself, if nothing, I've said it earlier, if nothing changes, nothing changes. Just make those little tweaks every week and I look for every day I look for the energy of the person I want to be still be I've still got goals now and it's changed my life I am the best bro I would like to think I'm the best brother I've got another brother but you know I'm the best friend son I'm there I'm not a burnt out when I go home for Christmas I'm not ill or a burnt out wreck and I'm there out of everything though I'm there for myself Mm -hmm. I'm there for me. I can pick myself up now. My moods don't go up, down, up, down, up, down. Still like a cup of coffee, but only two a day. Don't drink Red Bull or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I want to go into work. I want to be there. I'm not waiting for the children to go. And we were saying earlier, like I'm I'm a senior leader, but managing adults is hard. Managing adults is tough. And I find that my patience with dealing with it has got so much better. And I'm not reactive to people. I used to be quite like, uh, excuse me, I don't think so, but I'm not that type of person anymore at all. I'm quite, I can sit back and listen and then help people think of solutions to things. Whereas whenever I was burnt out, I had no creativity left because your brain just doesn't have the space to think. Yeah. No, I know. Yeah, there's so much of that. It's like, it's it's resonating as well. I think the higher up the ladder you go as well, the more that's on your shoulders, the more you feel weighed down. And that's the point where you think, well, actually, I, I'm I'm important. Work is important, but I'm more important than that. And mm-hmm. you know, it's not that you're, you know, indispensable. Well, no, actually, you are indispensable in life. Like work doesn't matter, you know. But you are you are the most important thing to mm-hmm. you, you know, and to other people. Yeah, and when you when when you work on yourself. It is one of the most magical things. I'm sitting here with a smile on my face. I know you probably can't see us, people. So just before this, I just went to the gym instead of because I was on a first aid course this morning, didn't get to go. And I just was looking around. Everyone, you know, the, some people were very serious in there or had a bit of face on them. And I had this big smile on my face because I was just like, I'm going rec- to record this podcast episode this evening. I can't wait to just chat about well being and stuff. But 
I've said to people before who I work with people who, and people who I don't work with who are in leadership or management or I feel like the whole world's on their shoulders. I said, if you don't look after yourself right now, you're going to fall apart. And when you do, that is it. Mm-hmm. And you're the only you there's ever going to be. Mm-hmm. And that is it. A time will pass. Like I've got friends who I will never forget her saying to me, Dan, I can't wait for my little boy to go to bed last night so I can get the laptop up and go on, to, go on with work. And I said, you will you will regret that when you're older, when they're not around anymore. When they walk out that door 18, no, ma'am, not whatever. You'll remember all those times. I know it's such a harsh thing to think about. Like I think about all those times when I <clears throat> didn't go to see my granddad mm-hmm. or my granny and stuff like that. Or there's times when I purposely didn't answer the phone when the phone friends were calling or family were calling my mom and dad. Bless everyone else is still here, but I purposely didn't answer because I was too busy. Mm-hmm. I didn't have time. And I was so tired in the evenings. And the things that I put myself through day to day going into work and feeling awful, no energy. And I'm just not wanting to be there. It wasn't the person I, I was. I used to be the singing and dancing teacher that was always chirpy and had all the ideas. But whenever you're burnt out, there's nothing left and you have to bring yourself. I'm sh- If you're listening to this now, people, you can do it. I am proof in the pudding that you I can come from an absolute breakdown, not caring about myself and having no energy of anything to run on a marathon mm. and having energy and wanting to be there. I mean, the thing is, that, you know, obviously we can see each other whilst we're recording this. And th- there is that bit, there's that when you, you're kind of talking about the bits that happened before, it was your body language, it was like, it, it, it was down, it was serious. But actually when you were talking about the transformative parts of, you know, since 2020 and mm-hmm. all the bits that changed, actually your shoulders went up, you went up and this smile came across your face. So actually it, it, you can see what the benefits are to you. And it's, it just emphasizes how important it is. Education is a really, really tough thing. Life is a really tough thing. Mm-hmm. And I think it's that bit if you it it like you said, it's not selfish to look at yourself and to focus on yourself. Oh, one hundred percent not. Because why why not? This is the thing. Why not think and help yourself to do better? Like I remember thinking, I couldn't even give myself half an hour. This is gonna sound silly. I couldn't even give myself the 20 minutes or half an hour of what it was to watch Friends, which is my favorite TV show, because I had no time. And I remember thinking, I've given all day at work. I've given work everything I've got. And it still wasn't enough because I was let I was letting it in. And because I look at my week through the can do, I think of jobs and things that we have to do at work as a gas. The amount of time you give it, a gas will fill a room for the amount of space you give it. But if you give it certain time slots, that's all the time it's going to get. And there has to come a point where you have to cut it off and say, nope, that's it. Even just start with one day a week. There's a lady I, I spoke at a conference a couple of years ago in London. I was like, yeah, a couple of years ago in London. I, d- I spoke about my well-being journey. It was a very emotional day. And this woman came up to me crying and she said, you know, I would love to leave one day at half past four, but I don't ever think I don't think it's ever going to be possible. I was like, why? Why is it not possible for you to leave at half past four? To, no, it's just it's just too much to do. I was like, right, I want you to email me. We're going to set up a call. We're going to organize this. And we looked at how you can just structure things a little bit better. Cut, I was like, no, that can wait. That can wait. That can wait. She, but I'm scared. What will SLT say? And we'll take it to them. It could be a revolutionary thing for your school. They might not lose as much staff. I know, but maybe people going off on the sick because mm-hmm. they're looking after themselves. And you'll have people that want to be there, that love coming to work, because negativity loves an audience, but positivity is infectious. Yeah. Both of those things, like, neg- oh, people love a bit of negativity. And so she started, she's emailed me back recently. She had, she's, she leaves two days a week, now at half past four. And she she's starting to make that change. And I just, for me, that is just amazing. Because I was like, I'm going to help you to do this. You can just start one day, one day and then once you feel that positivity coming from you're like maybe i'll go for two days or three days or four days and it's not that you're not doing work you're just prioritizing things mm-hmm. and just um planning it out it's all about planning if things don't get like we can plan very well for work we have to plan for ourselves as well it just takes a little bit of effort i do my plan every sunday morning i start doing a bit of it on a friday night for early for work every sunday morning and i do this thing that my best friend tom said to me he started this thing where it's set a timer and see what happens. 
So I set myself a 15 minute timer on Alexa over there and for 15 minutes and I give myself 15 minutes to get it done. And I started it at work now after work, I give myself 30 minutes and I'm going to, and I've realistically thought of what I can get done after work. Said, do you know, do this, do this, make that. And I get it done in 30 minutes. It's sort of like a little competition for myself. So the set a timer, see what happens, plan out your week and don't let tasks fill all the time that you've got. Give them a certain level, a certain amount of time. Think about the energy it's going to take to it and just get it done. And this is the other thing I've started doing called the 54321 for Mel Robbins. Say if you want to go for a walk in the evening after work, we are tired after day, especially with early years children. Oh my, people forget about that. It's exhausting because you want to be there for them. There's drama going on. You're trying to help them with their needs. And it's just the usual day to day. And sometimes I, I finish the day and I'm exhausted. And like I can imagine people getting home and if you've got kids or whatever as well. It's exhausting. You, you want to get up and maybe go for a walk. If I'm going to do something like that, I start saying five, four, three, and you have to stand up and make a movement towards that thing you want to do before you get to one. And it takes a lot of practice. For me in the morning, it was getting up out of bed so mm-hmm. I could go to the gym before work. And I said to myself, I'm going to promise myself that I'm going to start the five, four, three, two, one in September, well, in late August, September. And it's going to be hard. I'm not going to lie to myself. It's going to be hard. And so I started five, four, three, two, and I sat up before I got to one. Even just sitting up, that's the start of the chain of motion. Whereas now, like uh, last week, I was a little bit tired. And there was one day I was like, five, four, three. I, I wasn't saying out loud, but in my head, I was like, for goodness sake, I'm not by God. But as soon as I was up, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And now I just use it in different things. For example, when I come off this, I know I'm going to be a little bit tired, but I want to um, load the dishwasher and put the washing on the clothes source. I'm just going to say five, four, three, two, one, go and get it done. Give myself 10 minutes to get it done. And then I can relax. Sounds good. I mean, it, it's funny. It's like for me as well. It was the the leaving on time part, and that's something I've been struggling with. But actually, it was yesterday. I went. Do you know what? It's calm. It's quiet. The staff are in the right places. I've got the right staff on till close. See ya. Bye. And I I just left. I'd done mm-hmm. what I needed to do. Anything else could wait. And you know, it felt so good. You know. I just I bet it did. I'm on my way home. I'm like, what? You're early. I don't care. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm so happy that you did that. Oh, I so mean, you, won't, you won't be able to do it all the time, but that felt, I bet you felt like a whole new man. Like, did, what, what, what is this time I've got? What am I going to do? It was, it was, it was brilliant. I literally walked home, I, not walked home. I mean, I drive home because it's yeah, a bit far for me to go to work, but I, <laughs> I kind of, I drove home and I was like, I'm home. This is great. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's amazing. Like there's some days I walk back, I might have had a hard day at work. But because I've left at half four, I set an alarm, by the way. I set an alarm at 4 15 on my phone or my watch, put my watch back on again. And um and it goes beep, 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 to remind myself it's my 15 minute warning. And there's some days I'm walking back from work and I've got the music on my headphones or, and the the upbeat tunes come on and I feel like, yes, you've done it again. You've, you're on your way. And I'd, sometimes I don't know what to do with my well, I always have busy evenings, but I felt like a whole new man whenever I had the evenings because I go to the gym now in the morning. I was like, what am I going to do? I've got all these things I can do. I can actually clean and get the, keep the place tidy. I've got time to speak to people. I've got time to like FaceTime home or go and see friends. Mm-hmm. I used to cancel so many plans or not even make them. And then I stopped getting invited to things because I was constantly canceling stuff. Sundays for me used to be the worst day. I used to hate waking up on a Sunday because I knew I had... I remember in the days of uh, paper learning journeys, I used to have uh, over there uh, all sitting in little piles, alphabetical order, so that I could get, go, 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 five, 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 like annotate, annotate, annotate. Or like I'd be sitting with the laptop. As soon as I woke up on a Sunday, I'd say, oh, here we go. I'm going to have to start making PowerPoints because I've been told to for these early years' lessons. <laughs> Whereas now I've started to ask why. It become that little 1% braver all the time. If someone, if this new thing's coming in, as a, I, I would like to think that everybody can ask why. And I say that to my team. I say, if I ever bring something, a new idea, ask me why. Because then it might make me think about it. Yeah. And is it really going to be worth it? Just, I'm, just ask why. What benefit is this for the children? Like I see so many people. I get so many messages to my blog of teachers saying that, oh, my goodness, what was the one they had to do? Oh, so um, the head teacher wanted to know that they knew exactly where every child was with their next steps for everything. So they were given a little, do you remember like the old style spelling books? They were given one of those each and every single day before they left, they had to write the name of each child had a page or something, their next steps from that day. And they had to hand it in and she looked at it, the head teacher looked at it before they left, before she left apparently. 
I was like, what? And I remember I was like, there's no time for that. You do you do not need to show all of that. All that you that's impossible. That is absolutely impossible. And it's not what you're there for. So you're gonna go home now exhausted and borrow you borrow from tomorrow's energy. You're gonna start resenting that. And your mind's gonna be melted. You know where the kids are. I'm sure you can talk about it. Yeah. And I sent one of the links for one of the new um moderation videos for our years or something. And they're they're just sitting in like just chatting to each other about the children and where they are. Well, it was, it was funny, like you, you talked about that. And it's like, for me, I, I hate paperwork and I hate mm-hmm. curriculums and things like that. But ask me about the children and I will sit and tell you, we had, uh, nursery was at, down in England, um, we had Ofsted and they came in and they didn't want to see any of my paperwork. They didn't, nothing, nope. which is good because I had mm-hmm. next to nothing because I refused to. <laughs> But they asked me about the children. I was like, oh, yeah, so-and-so's there and so-and-so's there mm. and so-and-so's there. They actually turned around and and like said that if the rest of the rooms were like mine, it would it would have been brilliant, you know, because others were like some of the other rooms were concentrating so much on doing paperwork. And I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I, I know my children because I'm there with my children. I am present with my children. Mm-hmm. So that's how I want to be. And I felt more relaxed and more comfortable doing that because – yeah, I it it felt like I was going to enjoy my job, and I did mm. because I wasn't tied up with paperwork and things like that. Which is it it was a massive step for me. It was like let go of the paperwork; I don't need it. Yeah, I think some people feel some SLT, and I'm I'm SLT by the way, from so I'm not I'm not um what you call it? I'm a leader, so I'm not like what's the word? I'm not putting them down. We'll see something, or they'll hear a myth. And think, oh, this paperwork needs to be done just because you need to have this in place. There's a couple of things I, you know, this is me with my well-being things like knowledge organizers and things. And I remember we had Ofsted last January. He did not want to see anything. He didn't want to see anything at all. He asked me about my lessons and what, you know, why we, why I was teaching certain something. And and I was able to go into detail that, oh, well, because the children are here and so-and-so needs support with this, but we're going to also, you know, question them. We've well, done a lot of work of interaction and stuff and provision and stuff like that. And he said, oh, that's really good. And I remember I actually spoke to the Ofsted inspector about my wellbeing journey and stuff. I actually got a mo- So he was typing up his feedback and um, it was just, it was saying out loud. It was just, it's what I've been dying to hear. It was so... Over, he was so impressed and, all, and I burst into tears in front of him he said are you alright I was like you don't understand how much this means to me I was like I've not only been changing this place and building it up but I've been building up myself at the same time and he just looked at me and he was like this is a positive Ofsted story and he was like okay and he just was like he gave me a thumbs up and he started typing and it was that and that was a nice little moment and I, I remember leaving that time and I said to myself I can share this with other teachers and earlier staff now because you do not need all this paperwork. You do not need to completely slave your life away to, not that it's all about that, to get a good thing from Ofsted or something, but you don't need to do all that. I'm sure that you can do well with them and not sell your soul to the paperwork devil or completely set up the most amazing environments every second day of the week or whatever. You can make it work with what you've got. You can only do what you can do with the time you've got and the energy you've got, you've got without borrowing from tomorrow and cheating yourself out of a life it's cutting that out you deserve. Isn't it? Hmm? It's cutting out what's unnecessary. Yeah, cut out all the fab. Even now, I'm still trimming stuff off. I'm like, no, <laughs> not doing it. Absolutely not. Well, Dan, time is definitely against us, but it has been absolutely amazing. And I like, I think the word for you is transformational because what you've done is you've shown that it it is possible to be in education, be devoted to what you do, to love what you do, but also to value you as well. So Dan, Mm -hmm. thank you so much for talking to us. That's okay. Thanks for having me. I hope you enjoyed that, everybody. Dan McFarlane, thank you very much.